Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Antoine Vastel from the University of Lille in Ria, and today I'm going to present joint work uh, with Pierre Laperdry, Walter Ridamatkin, and Romain Rouvois about uh, our approach, FP Stalker, that uh, evaluates the effectiveness of browser fingerprinting for tracking. So let me briefly explain what browser fingerprinting is. So traditionally, the technique to track people on, a, on the internet is to use cookie. So when a user arrives on a website, the website generates a unique user identifier and assign it in a cookie so that when the user comes back, uh, it can be tracked and an advertiser can, for example, build a, a browsing profile of this user to propose targeted advertising. The goal of browser, uh, of browser fingerprinting is to do this without storing anything in the, uh, in the browser or in the user's device. So that means that even if the user deletes its cookies or goes in private mode, a browser fingerprinting can still track the browser. Uh, to do this, it relies on the fact that uh, different uh, users may have different device configuration. And if this device configuration is quite unique and stable over time, then this configuration could be used as uh, an identifier to keep track of the user. So what we call a, a browser fingerprint is simply the combination of attributes that are either sent by the browser, such as some HTTP headers, for example, the encoding headers, the languages, or the user agent, or other attributes that can be collected in the browser using JavaScript, such as the canvas, the platform, or the screen resolution. Uh, state of the art has shown that fingerprint uniqueness is around 80, 90%, depending on the data set. But uniqueness is not enough for tracking. Because if you keep be, uh, being unique, but every time you're unique in a different way, it may not be possible to track you. So the goal of this paper was to evaluate the fingerprint stability first, and in a second time to evaluate the effectiveness of browser fingerprint tracking. So this research could not have been possible without uh, Am I Unique. So Am I Unique is a, a website that uh, that enables you to uh, see your fingerprint and see how unique you are. We also have two browser extensions, one for Chrome and one for Firefox. And so uh, we use this data set for this paper, so the browser extension data set, collected over a two years period. And it contains, uh, when it, once it has been filtered, around uh, 98,000 fingerprints from uh, 1,900 browsers. So we removed users with uh, less than seven fingerprints for this study and also users that have a uh, counter measure installed. So our first finding is about fingerprint stability. So we show that stability varies depending on the attributes and on the user. So in the table, we see for different attributes such as the screen resolution, the time, the attribute remains constant. We see that for the screen resolution, uh, half of the user, so the 15th percentile, have a fingerprint that never changes, have a screen resolution that never changes. And for other users, so if we look at the 19th percentile, for 10% for 10 of the more uh, of the user that change more often, uh, the screen resolution evolve every three days on average. So this difference can be explained by the fact that some user may have an external monitor and for example, when you go to work, you plug your laptop to an external monitor, and when you come home, you unplug it. And so for some user, for some user it changes regularly. But for other users without an external monitor, it may remain cons uh, constant uh, for a long period of time. Other attributes, such as the user agent, uh, evolve more uh, uniformly uh, across all users because uh, it contains uh, the browser version, and since browser may get updated regularly, uh, then it evolves uh, for all users. And finally, there are other attributes such as the accept header or the cookies, so whether or not user accept cookies that are much more stable. For example, if we look at the cookies, uh, for 95% of the browser in the data set, the value never changed. So now the goal is to evaluate fingerprint tracking. So let me briefly uh, define what we mean by tracking. So in our case, tracking is the process of linking different fingerprints from a given browser. So when a website collects uh, fingerprints, you want to link it with fingerprint in the database and assign uh, the right identifier. So we have two options. The first one is uh, during the linking process, the algorithm finds an identical or a similar fingerprint 
and then it can link uh, the new fingerprint to an existing browser identifier. Or uh, the algorithm find no or too many similar fingerprints, and in this case, it may uh, decide to assign a new browser identifier. So we proposed a rule-based uh, algorithm uh, whose goal is to, given two fingerprints, decide if they may originate from the same browser. So we have a, uh, a set of strict rules because we do not expect the operating system, the platform, and the browser to be different between two fingerprints from the same browser. We also do not expect the browser to be downgraded. Then we have rules that have been extracted from the statistical analysis conducted. So we, we saw that some attributes such as the local storage or the canvas are quite stable over time. So we consider that for two fingerprints to originate from the same browser, they must be identical. Then we have other attributes that may evolve uh, sometimes, such as the user agent or the headers. So we, they can, the, these attributes can be different between the two fingerprints, but with a similarity greater than 75%. So this threshold has been chosen because of the only state-of-the-art paper uh, realized by, uh, in the panoptic paper that used fingerprinting for tracking. And finally, other attributes such as the resolution of the time zone can be different and no more than two uh, attributes can be different between the two fingerprints. The problem with this approach is that even though it performs quite well for tracking users, as we will see in the results uh, in the evaluation uh, part, but it's difficult to create complex rules manually. We can do better. So we propose uh, another approach. This is uh, an hybrid approach that relies on strict rules first to filter the potential number of uh, fingerprint candidates. And in a second time, we apply machine learning to obtain a better accuracy. So the goal of our machine learning model is given two fingerprints to compute a probability that these two fingerprints originate from the same browser. Uh, we choose a random forest. So a, a random forest is simply a, an assemble of a decision tree. And each tree makes a vote. And in the end, the, the result is the majority of the vote between the different trees. We choose a random forest rather than a model such as a neural network because it provides a, a good, good trade-off between precision and interpretability. So in this, in this presentation, I don't interpret the different attributes and features of the model, but uh, you can find more results in the paper. But machine learning model performs on, uh, on a vector of numbers, so, and fingerprints are mostly set of uh, a combination of string attributes. So the way we vectorize our fingerprints is the following. So if we have a new fingerprint, FP new, and a fingerprint in the database, when we compare the two fingerprints, we do mostly pairwise comparison, and we extract a string similarity for attributes such as the encoding of the languages. For other attributes such as the canvas, we extract only a binary value, so zero if the two attributes are different, or one if it's the same. And we also added new features such as the number of changes, so the number of differences between the two fingerprints. Then we can train our random forest model. So we train it on 40% of the dataset order chronologically. Uh, and we feed pairs of fingerprints to the model. So we show pair of fingerprints that comes from the same browser and pair of fingerprints that come from different browsers. And we apply an under sampling to reduce overfitting. That means that if you take randomly two fingerprints in the dataset, most of them will come from different browser. So uh, we readjust the proportion of fingerprints that come from the same browser in the training set. Finally, we can go to the evaluation. So uh, to evaluate the effectiveness of uh, browser fingerprint tracking, we, we conduct the evaluation on the test set of around 60,000 fingerprints from 1,400 browsers. So to explain the protocol and the different metrics and why we choose these metrics, I will, uh, I will go through a, a small example. So if we consider that we have uh, three browsers, A, B, and C, with different fingerprints, the first step is to generate a fingerprint sequence. So we order fingerprint in the way that they would have been collected, but we simulate the effect of the fingerprinting frequency because we want to test whether or not collecting a, a fingerprint every day or every two days or every three weeks has an impact on the possibility to track a browser. The idea is that if you collect a fingerprint every day, there will be less changes probably than if you collect it every three weeks. And finally, we can apply the linking algorithm. And what we obtain is a different tracking chains. 
So a chain is simply a set of attributes that have been linked by the tracking algorithm together. That means that the algorithm consider that they belong probably to the, the same browser. What we see in this example is that chain one contains both fingerprints from browser A, but there is also a mistake because the linking algorithm added a fingerprint from browser B in yellow. In the case of an advertiser that will try to use fingerprinting for collecting data, this means that it will mix profile of two different browsers or users and the data will be sort of polluted. If we look at chain three and four, uh, we see that uh, so the algorithm splits data from fingerprint from browser C in two different uh, tracking chain, which means that uh, the, the, the advertiser probably will think that it belongs to the two different user and will lose some value. So the first metric we use to evaluate the effectiveness of broader fingerprinting for tracking is the uh, average maximum tracking duration. So the tracking duration is the period of time a linking algorithm correctly matches the fingerprint of a given broader instance in a single tracking chain. So for each user, we take the maximum uh, time it has been uh, tracked and we average it over all of the browser. So in green, the, the highest line, it's the hybrid version. So the graph represents the metric for different collect frequency and we see that the hybrid version on average is capable of tracking a browser around 75 days on average. But we also see that the performance slightly decreases as the collect frequency increases. Uh, just below in a range, we, we have the rule-based version of our approach. So uh, we see that uh, this, this version is more impacted by the, by the collect frequency because uh, it, when the collect frequency increases to 20 uh, days, it's cap uh, it tracks only browser for 60 days. And uh, we also compared with the panoptic leak algorithm proposed in 2010 by Eckersley, which uh, is the only state-of-the-art algorithm that uh, rely on the fingerprint for tracking browser. Uh, the second metric is the ownership. So the ownership can be of a chain can be seen as the purity of a chain, or it reflects the, the pollution or the quality of the data. So once again, if we look at chain one, it contains fingerprint from browser A and one fingerprint from browser B. So we can consider that uh, chain one is owned at 80% by browser A and polluted at 20% by browser B. So this metric reflects how good is the data collected. If we look at the average ownership, what we see is that once again, so the higher is better, the closer to one, the, the hybrid version is uh, around 99% of uh, average ownership, and the performance also slightly decreases as the collect frequency increases. The rule-based version is really close to the hybrid version, with performance around 98%. And once again, panoptic leak version is, uh, performs uh, a little uh, worse. Uh, it is more impacted by the by the collect frequency. So when the collect frequency is around one day, it has an ownership of around 96% and the ownership uh, goes down to 93%. Now, if we look in detail at the hybrid version, because it is a, a better algorithm for tracking, and if we set a collect frequency of seven days, so we choose this number because it, it's a week, so it's a case where someone goes on a website every week and gets its fingerprint collected. So the graph represents the percentage of browser that can be tracked a certain amount of time. And in, a, in, a, in gray, so the iOS line represents the perfect tracking time. So that's what we could have achieved if we had a perfect tracking algorithm. And just below in black, we see uh, the same graph with our algorithm, the hybrid version. And if we look at the intersection with the green line, we see that 26% uh, of the browser could be tracked more than 100 days. But on the opposite, uh, there are around 20% of, of the browser that cannot be tracked more than 25 days on average. Which means that on one side, we have users that are really unique, which have a bro uh, unique fingerprint and that can be tracked easily for a long period of time. But on the opposite, we have also a fingerprints a browser with a more common fingerprints and which are much more difficult to track. So I will conclude this talk. So we saw that fingerprint uh, tracking require both uniqueness and stability. Uh, our first finding was that stability depends on the attributes 
Uh, we thought that, for example, uh, the screen resolution uh, may evolve more frequently than attributes such as uh, the, lo the local storage or the acceptators. But it also depends on the user, on the browser, or on the context. Some, ex uh, some users may have an external monitor and may change their screen resolution often. Others may travel a lot and may change uh, their time zone frequently. Uh, we propose two approaches, uh, one based on rule. So I didn't uh, show it in this presentation, but in the paper we ran a, a benchmark on a generated data set of two million fingerprints, and the rule-based version uh, takes around uh, 100 milliseconds to match a fingerprint, and that's around five times faster than the hybrid version. But on the opposite side, uh, the hybrid version is capable of tracking browser around 10 days longer on average. And so in our data set, we, work, we, we could track 26% of the browser more than 100 days, but uh, on the contrary, there are also uh, browsers that are much more difficult to track because they have a more common fingerprint. Uh, thanks for your attention. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, hi, this is Ben Schock from CISPA. Um, very interesting work. Um, first one technical question. Um, local storage, how did you measure kind of similarity? You stored a value and checked it was still there or? No, uh, in fact, local storage and cookies is a, uh, so th the attributes reflect whether or not the uh, user accept to store anything in its, in its browser. But we do not store anything. We just check if we can do it. Okay. So we test only the binary if the value is the same for the two fingerprints. Okay. Um, and I was wondering, I mean, um, so the data that you're collecting, also that, that Eckersley was collecting, is always people that go to that website. So isn't there, is there kind of a sampling bias in those people that are there? Exactly. Um, because I'm just thinking that like a regular user would not have any custom fonts, any custom extensions, uh, would just have Windows and, I don't know, Internet Explorer uh, running, right? Yeah, so uh, maybe at uh, 3W there was another paper by, the, by one of the co-author, and he, they collected data on a popular French website. And so they had a uniqueness rate of around 40%. So this shows that our data set is biased, of course. But uh, I think it reflects something is that people that care about privacy and that have probably less common fingerprints can be tracked. But probably the proportion of uh, users that are vulnerable to tracking using fingerprinting are less high than what we may show in, th in this data set. All right, thank you. Any other questions? I have a quick one. Uh, do you know uh, if there's any data on how often people clear their cookies? Because that seems to be relevant to um, how long they can be tracked as well. Yeah, so uh, there are different studies, uh, but uh, I don't re really remember the, the numbers. But I think it could be used like even without totally deleting the cookies, uh, some people may want to go in private mode because sometimes you may not want to the website to know that you visited it multiple times to check for a flight ticket, for example, and people may not delete their cookies, but simply go in private mode. And this could be used to see that it's the same person. Right. All right, uh, let's thank Antoine. <laughs>